What some Arab politicians just did in Israel's parliament is a disgrace. Talk about spitting in the well that feeds you. As all of you know, big tech censorship is growing. The best way to support our video work is to go to pulseofisrael.com and subscribe to our video newsletter and share our videos. If you are already a subscriber, thank you. By the way, there are two other ways to connect with Israel and support our important work. Number one, help us strengthen Israel by strengthening our presence in Judea and Samaria. All you have to do is just visit this website for the details and choose the option best for you. And second, no matter where you are in the world, enjoy the beauty of Israel via our online virtual tours of Israel. From your own computer, your own, your own living room. Just visit IsraelIsBeautiful.com and sign up for one of the virtual tour packages. All right, so now let's delve into this latest issue and I'm standing here in front of Israel's parliament, the Knesset. First of all, please understand, Arab Israelis are the most blessed Arabs in the Middle East. They have full freedom and equality without the fear of being killed. Regardless if they are Sunni Muslims, Shiite Muslims, Christian Arabs, Druze, atheists, women, or gay. Now, while their fellow Arabs in Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, etc. can only dream of having the possibility of leaving, living a life of freedom like they can here in Israel, regardless of their identity, together with the potential of economic prosperity that they have here in the Jewish state of Israel, here too they can even serve in Israel's parliament. Ta-da! Right over there. Now, again, are things perfect? No, of course there are, there are social tensions here in Israel. Are things perfect to any country? Are there no social tensions in any, in any democracies with minorities today? That's just reality. So what happened yesterday in Israel's parliament? Well, it was the first day that all the parliamentarians came to be inducted in the new parliament to swear allegiance, in a, in a sense, since the recent new elections. Now, what usually is an emotional event with no surprises, a number of Arab Knesset members decided to take advantage of the ceremony and protest the existence of the state of Israel. Yes, protest the actual existence of the same Jewish state that gives them freedom and equality to become democratically elected representatives representatives in Israel's parliament. What did they do? So members of the Arab Majority Joint List Alliance Party sparked an outcry when they substituted the traditional swear of allegiance commitment to serve Israel and the Knesset with commitments to fight apartheid, to fight the occupation, and to fight racism. Now, the standard oath of office for lawmakers beginning their Knesset states, and I quote, I commit to be faithful to the state of Israel and to fulfill with devotion my cause in the Knesset. Pretty simple commitment statement, right? Instead, what do these Arab parliamentarians say? I commit to fighting against the occupation. I commit to fighting against apartheid. Basically, they're trying to destroy the state of Israel by, by de debasing it and delegitimizing it like it's done around the world. So first of all, according to Israeli law, parliamentarians must say the proper declaration. And if they don't, then they are punished by withholding some of their parliamentary rights. So that should happen. But more serious than that. Think about this. Instead of representing their constituents, Arab Israelis, to improve their lives, they are declaring their commitment to fight Israel and instead use their position to stand up for the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, not for their own constituents. They are a disgrace to their own constituents of Arab Israelis. That is why more and more Arab Israelis who want to better integrate into Israeli society are no longer voting for these Arab parties, but instead vote for Jewish Zionist parties. They understand that some of the Jewish parties, even the right-wing nationalistic parties, are more interested in looking after their interests as Arab Israelis than their own Arab politicians. Now, it's not a really high number, but it is a number that's growing and growing with each election. So understand, the future of Israel for all Israelis, including our Arab minority, is bright. But so long as enough Arabs continue to elect political representatives who are more interested in using their government positions in the state of Israel as, as politicians in the state of Israel to destroy the Jewish state of Israel instead of be focused on improving the amazing life Arab Israelis have to make it even better, 
well, the process will just take longer. But don't let any media outlet or journalist convince you otherwise. With all the issues, Israel is the best country in the Middle East for all Arabs, regardless of their individual Arab identity. This is Avi Abelow signing off for the Pulse of Israel in front of Israel's parliament, the Knesset in Jerusalem. Pulse of Israel, frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.